Hey guys, what's up? This is Seth from retipster.com and I wanted to share something with you that I thought was really, really profoundly helpful. So I was taking this course a little while ago on Airbnb, like how to run and manage your own if you have a property where you're trying to make money from it as a short-term rental. And this course covered all kinds of information, but one of the things that really stuck out to me that I thought they did a great job on was the importance of really good photography for an Airbnb listing. And by the way, I think this actually applies just as much to like a rental property or even a house you're trying trying to sell. So a lot of this stuff works for pretty much any type of residential real estate listing. But what I really liked about this was they didn't just explain it, but they actually had like actual examples of what great photography looks like and precisely why it's important to get these certain kinds of angles with certain things in the picture. And also just how to stage your Airbnb listing the right way in the first place. All these things contribute to a listing that is like almost irresistible if you do it all right. I actually reached out to them and said, hey, like, would you mind if I took that segment of your course and just packaged it and put it on my blog and YouTube channel so that people can just like learn that one little bit of it. And they were gracious enough to say yes. And that's what I'm about to show you right here in this video. And beneath this video on YouTube and on the blog, I'm gonna have an affiliate link to their course in case you wanna learn more about this stuff. I will say it is for the self-managing type. So if you want to like invest in properties and have somebody else manage it, a lot of it probably won't be as relevant to you, but if you do want to manage it yourself, there's tons of awesome information in there. So be sure to check that out too. But without further ado, let's jump into the content and I hope you find it helpful. So the next thing that we're gonna do is professional photography. So once your unit is all deep clean is done, you've got it staged, and I'm gonna talk more about exactly what the what the cleaning is as well if you want if you want guidelines around that. But really it's just about getting it really nicely clean, prepared for the first guest, ready for the photographer, staged up really, really nicely. You want to look at its absolute best. Now we're gonna have professional photographers come in. So we're gonna set the standard and showcase the property. So again, you wanna understand the outcome, same as before and get the whole picture. Don't just highlight the rooms. You don't just wanna photograph rooms. You really wanna show the space as a whole. You wanna show little individual things. You wanna really show the coziness of it. And so I'll show you, I've actually got some swipe files of um, different properties that our photographers have photographed to show you exactly what I mean by this. And then we've got the checklist as well. So let's go through those two as well again. So the property photography checklist is really going to be used to ensure that the new that your, your listing is uh, properly photographed with the correct shots, the proper lighting and the right photography style. So everything's really important. So again, just go through here and you can actually give this to your photographer. Um, we give it to our photographer, it gives them a really good idea. They love it. It just gives them a really clear picture so they know exactly how to deliver what, what you're looking for. You know, staging is being completed and double checked. You want to use a mixture of soft and hard focus shots. So what this means is that you're going to want to have some that are that are just focused on one item. And so it's probably best that I actually pull up the photography swipe file as well, just to show you what I'm talking about. So what I mean by that is that if we look at some of the detailed shots like this one, right? So on this one, you can see a nice hard focus. You can see that, you know, it's a nicely zoomed in and then you can see oftentimes. So this is another another really nice one. It's an artsier shot. Again, uh, we'll talk a little bit more about these kind of kind of mood setting shots as well, but really, really important. And you want to use the right focus. You don't want to have things that are too, too artsy and kind of, you know, if you're, if you have a blurred background is basically a soft focus and you don't want to have that for too many pictures because then again, it doesn't really show the, the space. It doesn't, it just doesn't look quite as nice and inviting. So they should be, you know, warm, cozy, and well lit. So again, if we look here, you know, nice and warm and cozy, you can see a nice fall day and you can see a nice place to lie down, right? So it's nice and inviting. So we've got some nice, you know, some nice uh, tungsten lighting as opposed to just having some white lights or photography lighting and that kind of thing. Nice and warm and inviting in here. Um, so again, just some nice, nice shots there. Um, and then a mixture of both, of, both um, of shots to both show the space and set the mood. So really important here. So this is a, a shot that shows the space, right? So these are some more shots that show the space really nicely. And then we also want to have some shots that are going to set, set the mood really nicely. So for example, if we get to this one, 
right? Now, this one, and I believe some of the ones yeah, below it are going to set the mood. So this is a really nice way for someone to just be able to envision themselves. So, you know, if you had to just had, like, let's say just just this photo of the outdoor space. Oh, cool. There's an outdoor space. But here you just look at it and you go, wow, oh, man, it's gonna be so nice to just sit out here in the fall and, and just, you know, like, look at the leaves and watch my breakfast and sit my coffee in the morning right? Really sets the mood for them to actually, the guests to want to be there and envision themselves using the space as opposed to just showing the space itself. Again, a nice mood setting shot, nice and cozy. They can picture themselves kind of bundled up there. Some nice, really nice mood setting shots so you can see, you know, what it'd be like to just sit there and dine and, and have their meal. You know, all those more detailed shots that a lot of people kind of overlook. Um, and you're not going to include necessarily all of these in your listing. You're going to pick out the, the best ones, but you want to have a good mixture of both, right? You want to have some that showcase the space and then you want some that this doesn't showcase the space at all, but it shows that there's a breakfast bar for people to eat at. Um, you know, this one's another one of my favorite listings, honestly. Um, just some of the photography for the outdoor space was really beautifully done. Um, and so you can see our photographer did a great job back here of just really, you know, setting the mood. People can envision themselves sitting back here, you know, just hanging out, enjoying some candlelight, enjoying, enjoying the summer, enjoying the backyard. And then this nice, beautiful living room, really cool rooms, just does a really good job of showcasing everything. And then there's some great mood setting shots as well um, that you'll see in here that just show, again, the, the cozy bedroom, nice and inviting with the pillows there. Um, just did a really great job, right? So you understand what I mean, I hope, about the, the mixture of both to show the space and to set the mood. You wanna have a minimum of two stage shots for the listing. So the newspaper, the laptop, the food, that kind of stuff. A minimum of at least 25 total shots and all photos should be in landscape. You wanna minimize the number or completely eliminate the number of uh, photos in portrait mode. So landscape as the photos that are horizontal versus portrait being the ones that are vertical. Not so many vertical, you wanna have the ones that are, that are horizontal. The lighting, all photos should have great natural lighting wherever applicable. So again, do this during the daytime. Uh, golden hour is a great time. So right at, at sunset, um, right around sunset, a little bit before sunset, make sure that your photographer is not starting at sunset because then by, by the time they finish, it's likely going to be too dark. Um, so during daylight hours, you know, professional lighting uh, used for any low light areas. So you want to turn the lights on, use professional lighting. Um, don't just leave it dark. You, the last thing that you want is some dark photos. Um, showcase the features of the space as well, not just the space itself. So, you know, again, you've got, you know, nice, uh, a really nice kitchen, a really nice living room, whatever it is, showcase the features of that space. Um, you know, showcase the, you know, guidebook if you've got, if you've got one put together, whatever it is, right. Um, you know what I mean by showcasing the features and setting some mood. We already talked about that. Um, key features are showcased, you know, pillows, bedding, towels, couches, just the comfy stuff, right. You want some photos of the front of the house um, and all the porches and patios and balconies if applicable, and also some photos of the neighborhood if it's in a, in a picturesque area. So if we take a look here, I'll show you, we've got um, up here, if we scroll up, so this one, it's in a beautiful area. Obviously I showed you all the outdoor shots, but one of the nice things too is our photographer got a great great shot of the, of the actual place, um, just you know, out front of it. Uh, just the outdoor and the front doorway. That's a really nice thing to have because again, it just it's a way for you to just kind of guide someone into the space and almost have a bit of a virtual tour for them and they can see that they're in a nice area. It's nice and homey. It feels very summery um, and they can kind of envision themselves outdoors as well, which is really nice. You want to have in the bathroom, um, you know, photos of the space, close-ups of the towels and different pictures you might have in there. In the bedrooms, multiple shots to showcase the space, as well as close-ups of the beddings and pillows to make it nice and inviting. In the living room, same thing, photos of the couch as both a couch and separate as a bed if applicable. So if you have a couch, um, neither one of those did, but if, if you have a couch that folds down to a bed, you want to have it photographed as a couch and then have it all set up like that, take all the photos of the space you need, and then also fold it down to a bed, set it up with all the bedding, the pillows, the throw blankets, the throw pillows, everything, make it really nice, and then have, them, have the photographer, you can have the photographer do that, and then have the photographer re-photograph the space with it set up as a bed, and highlight the bed if, as if it were a bedroom, same way, right? Multiple shots of the, of the room to showcase the space, and then the dining area, you wanna have set with place settings, photos of appliances, um, you know, things like a coffee maker, a toaster oven, a microwave, those kind of things. Nice to have those photos so you can show that they're in the space. Um, and then photos, multiple photos of the room to showcase the space itself. So that's everything. It really goes through everything in detail. Again, it's a really, really great tool because it, like I said, 
this is one of the most high leverage things that you can do for your listing is get really, really great photos. Um, if you can get phenomenal photos, it's a small thing, very easy to do, that makes a big difference. So both of the, the, the checklist for photography and the swipe files are both included in the, in the resource section, the download section. So make sure that you grab those and use them. I highly recommend that you actually give both of those to your photographer for them to use. Um, so that they have a, a really, really clear understanding of what's required from them. A picture is worth a thousand words, and that could not be more true than on Airbnb. It's the first thing that it, that your listing gets showcased by. It's the first thing that makes someone click your listing. It's a thing that makes them stay. It's the thing that makes them book. It's the thing that makes them justify the price. Everything. Really, it's one of the highest converting value points of your listing. So you want to make sure that this is not done to 90% not done in 95%, not even 99%. You really want to go all out and get 110% on this. Um, so take the time to really find the right photographer, give them all the guidance they need and get these photographs done exceptionally well. Well, there you go, guys. That was it. I hope you found that really impactful. I know I got a lot out of that. I mean, I've always kind of understood what good photography looks like, but I thought they just did a really good job of explaining very clearly how to get these pictures and why they're so important. So. Hope you got a lot out of that. Again, if you want to learn more, I'll have a link to their course beneath this video. Feel free to check it out. And uh, yeah, wish you all the best in your real estate business. See ya.